Okay, folks, back with another video for you. This is gonna be pretty short, simple video. There's nothing too crazy here. It's just another black cottonwood removal. <laughs> Should change my YouTube channel to Cottonwood Killer. Seems like all I do these days are cottonwoods. <laughs> kind of the life of a contract climber. People don't really like doing these. They're just, they, they explode, they're brittle, they're weak. They're just gross garbage trees. The homeowner here actually tried to kill this tree just because it's like taking up so much space and the tree just keeps on, keeps on going. It doesn't care. This is a, a guy that I work for, lives kind of by my house. I did that um, there was like a fir tree that was super scary and dead over there. I cut a chunk of bark off of it and I was like, well, I gotta come out of down from this tree. That was up there. I'll probably be back from some more, but basically these cottonwoods are junk. He's got a nice view of Mount Rainier, or he used to, so we're taking this out. This belongs to the neighbor down the hill. He doesn't like the tree either. There's like a drain field and stuff there, so even though it looks wide open, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna climb it and just drop everything straight down, and then Dean will come in and just clean it when I'm done. Uh, he's a good customer. I'm like a contract climber. I basically do jobs like this for homeowners with property that can do the cleanup themselves, or I'll do subcontracting climbing for other tree services. This is Washington State. I'm just gonna go up this black cottonwood and just drop everything straight down. So I don't really like asking the homeowner to send me up <laughs> gas and oil and stuff. So I'm bringing my own gas and oil. I don't like them coming under my tree, you know. Sometimes when you're working out here by yourself, you kind of need favors from the customers, but I don't really like doing that. So just to be safe, I bring my own gas and oil. They're just these little Gatorade bottles. And I just got these rubber things like on Amazon or something using the 200T that John built for me. People, I don't know where John went. John's custom saws. He made this. 200 for me a year and a half ago and he's kind of disappeared. I haven't been able to get a hold of him. I don't know what happened to him. I'm using my monkey beaver saddle today. I, see, I really like using this harness when I'm heavy hauling, you know, when I'm carrying like gas and oil and stuff with me because it's got really great suspenders. It's a little bit of a heavy saddle, but the suspenders help and it's really nice for carrying lots of weight. I don't sell these at Sappy Supplies. I'm hoping to someday, but right now I don't. August won't sell. He has no <laughs> reason to sell me monkey beavers at wholesale because he sells every harness he makes so maybe someday i'll carry these i hope so this is the buck carrier i do sell that that thing works really well rope runner pro i sell that these are just some edelred carabiners they sent me i'm trying out i'll probably add edelred stuff to the site i'm not using the bungee leaner i'm using the straight one i lost my bungee one when i was working with mitch over in squim i cut my stilio so i'm using my gibbs climber which I sell, Sappy Supplies. Stein sent me these, they want me to add them to my site, so I'm just trying them out to decide if I wanna add those to Sappy Supplies or not. And then I keep having this issue with the rope because uh, if I leave a rope bag down here, I'm gonna bury it in debris. So I've been just carrying the whole rope up with me. Works well, but it's kinda heavy. So I went a couple days ago, I just bought, this is actually Velocity, but it's the Samson Dry version, which I'm gonna add to my site. So it's Velocity, but it's only 50 feet long. So in theory, I can single line down 50 feet. That's probably, Ah, I should probably have a longer rope for this tree. This tree's taller than 50 feet tall. But I'm kind of just experimenting. My idea is I can, it'll be easy not to tangle it up because it's so short. That's kind of the, the gear that I'm using. That's pretty much it, yeah. And then um, Rope Runner Pro. I sell that at sappysupplies.com. <laughs> you know, it's funny is I open up Sappy Supplies and they keep doing these jobs where like customers want gear. So that, like this guy, I'm gonna, when I send him the bill, I'm gonna send him one of these helmets too. I've got another job I'm doing where the guy wants to buy a helmet as well. And then Mitch bought some gear. It's kind of cool. I show up to jobs and <laughs> I like selling gear. But anyways, I told you it was going to be a short video. It's been five minutes. I'm sorry I lied to you guys. So I I'm going to just take this tree down and uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Oregon Speed Cut Nano bar and chain. Works great. I sell that too. I actually sell most of this stuff. I'm really trying to like build up my site so I can just feel like I sell everything I use. But I don't sell this saddle, but it's such a good saddle, you know? A smarter man would use a saddle that I sell, <laughs> but I feel like it'd be a, a little bit dishonest because I love this harness, you know? So even though I don't sell it, hopefully someday I will still try to promote this thing just because it's like, it's just so killer. I don't travel with it because it's too, it's too heavy. It's really heavy. It's really bulky, but the suspenders are so good and the padding is so thick that it's almost like not an issue. So these are the Stein spurs. I don't know what they're made of. They feel pretty light actually. They seem really nice. I should put some Velcro lower straps. I really like the Velcro lower straps. Oh, these are my JK boots that I'm wearing. These are climber boots, but I, uh, yeah, I've never, I, haven't, I haven't used these spurs yet. They're, they're new. It's kind of stiff on them. My big thing is I love the Velcro lower straps because you just get like a perfect fit. See this, I gotta, I had to pull that really tight. And if I hadn't pulled this tight, then it'd be kind of jiggly. So I would almost rather have cheap, heavy steel spurs with the Velcro lower straps than like really lightweight carbon fiber titanium spurs without 
the lower strap. I'm just a big fan of the Velcro. Oh, I need another carabiner. Ah, so far away. You know what, I'm gonna cheat. I'm just gonna take one of these carabiners. This is the Monkey Beaver Speedline Kit. Wish I sold that too, because it's awesome. I think someday I'll get August to sell stuff to me, but it's like, he already can't make the saddles fast enough, so it's like, why would he sell them to me, you know? Maybe someday he'll up the production and then start buying Monkey Beaver stuff. But I still try to support him, because he's like a really good guy and makes a great product. Alright, so I'm not gonna haul my rope up. My theory is because it's so short, if I get it tangled up, I can like get it untangled, if that makes sense. Oh, I did have three carabiners. Wait, you know what? The rope's so short, I'll just go to the end of it. Yeah, honestly, this tree's probably like 100 feet tall, so I think I'm actually. Oh, it's too fat. I think I'm probably being stupid using this short rope I should use like a longer one so I can get to the ground but you know I'm just kind of do it anyways like this so I guess my rope is so short it won't be able to reach the ground from the top but I'll be able to use it for work positioning at the top all right yeah, spurs feel pretty good theory worked out because I have now dropped a bunch of crap on my rope but it's really short so I should be able to untangle it pretty easily I did untangle it pretty easy and I didn't have to carry a whole bunch of it that actually worked pretty well kind of sucks hauling like 200 feet of rope up with you and the velocity is naturally very light <laughs> made a huge mistake being lazy not making clean cuts
really bad situation because like a dummy, I don't have a handsaw with me. I often don't bring a handsaw because I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pinch my saw. What am I gonna need a handsaw for? You know, if you if you pinch your saw and you have a handsaw, then you can cut the limb with the handsaw and get your saw. If I wouldn't have been able to break that by hand, luckily it's a very weak wooded species, I would have had to have gone and gotten a handsaw or had Dean tie one on, but that's not ideal. Hey, come under my tree. I got this dangling branch above your head. Tie on a handsaw. <laughs> you go into my truck and find a handsaw. No, okay, yeah, that wouldn't be a good idea. Do I want to scale up here? Let's look up and think. Not really a very good central tie into this thing. I guess the one I'm on is probably the best one. Maybe that one. No. I think I'm gonna just go up there and get tied in and then come back and start start topping this thing. This tree probably lost its top at one point, and that's why it splits out in a whole bunch of tops right here. The short rope is actually really nice. I can totally use my rope for positioning. Moving around up here, double tying in for safety. It's so easy to move, and it's so lightweight. Even if I do drop a branch on it, I only gotta pull 50 feet through. Hey fellas, I'm gonna take this one right in your direction. It probably won't go that far, but just to be safe, you might wanna step back.
weird. It hinged like a door. It leaned. Wow. Weird. So bizarre because sometimes, most of the time, cottonwood just pops and sometimes it hangs on like oak. It's so weird that it leaned there and it swung all the way over there. I, I thought it'd break off and just barely go to the left of my saw down there, but it actually followed all the way through. I can't believe that. It's so weird. I don't understand it. I think it's something about this time of year, but it can't, I don't know. Maybe it's just like the sap just started flowing. All the leaves are kind of like sticky. I literally don't know. It's tree work is so weird like that. You think you've got it figured out. And then sometimes these trees surprise you. That hinged like oak. That was so bizarre, so unexpected. Cause cotton was notoriously brittle and snappy, but that one wasn't, I don't, I don't get it. I think you got it all figured out. And then these trees just surprise you, you know? It can go the opposite way too. You think it's gonna hold and it doesn't. For the most part though, it's safe to assume the cotton is just gonna snap. I mean, it's really, it like fills up with water and it snaps under its own weight. They're just junk. They don't become like nice old growth trees. They just fall apart. So uh, it leans and I'm gonna top it. It's gonna move a little bit. If I cut it right here, this thing would it'd move a lot but I'm gonna cut it three pieces. It's like you're letting the pressure off slowly, you know? So I'll cut this one. And then I'll cut this one and then this one. And I'm gonna do the biggest one first because like, let's say I cut the littlest one first and then that one, these two won't move much. And then I'll cut that and this thing will shake a lot. If I cut the biggest one and that one, this one, the, the thing I'm standing on isn't gonna move that much. And even anything, even just these. Like that's not gonna change the way the top fits, but it, it releases, you know, you got all this weight out here, you're releasing pressure slowly more you can cut. I just don't like the tree to snap really hard. Especially cottonwood. One foot away. That's just like a cripple cut. It'll hold, but then I'll be able to break it because it's just like barely any back cut. So I was actually just talking to Gordy about that the other day. It's this weird thing. It's, it's we're talking one foot away from the fence. And what's weird is like, I don't know why, I don't know how, but I've just, so I've been doing this 13 years. This is about to sound kind of braggy, full disclosure. I'm not meaning, to, I've just done it so many times that it's really weird. I look at the top and I just, know almost always if it'll fit or not like falling a tree from the ground i gotta i've climbed a lot more than i've fallen trees and weirdly enough like when i'm at the top of a tree and i go to top it it's like i don't even think about it like i knew it was gonna be close and never for a second did i think it was gonna hit the fence there's just one foot away i don't know why that is but there's like no thinking there's no calculating it's just instinct you just get used to it you do it so much and you just start to be able to tell where the tops will fit not that i don't make mistakes i make mistakes all the time but it's just it's kind of weird it's the same thing like if you throw a branch like the second it leaves my hand, I know if I hit my mark or not. Like if I'm aiming for a spot, I know if I hit it the second it leaves my hand. I'm talking to Gordy about that the other day because he saw an Instagram video I did. It was a short too, where it's like the top uh, almost hit the gutter and some people like, oh, you should play it safe. But it's like, but I knew it wasn't going to hit the hit the house. I sound kind of like an idiot right now. I sound like I'm trying to like, oh, look how close that was. You shouldn't try to push it. All I'm trying to say is with experience, if you're like, you know, struggling to climb, because it's hard at first. Well, it's weird because climbing is so hard at first. And then when you do it for a long time, it's like so easy. Like now, because I've been doing this 13 years, it's just easy. It's like the easiest thing ever. So just, you know, keep that in mind. If you're struggling and you're in your first year of climbing or just two or three of your shoot, fifth year of climbing, it just, it gets easier. I don't know. I mean, maybe not if you're like getting really old and your body starts breaking down or something, but even that, I've known quite a few older guys that just, they, they can climb and then the groundwork is harder for them. I've known lots of guys like that. Like they want to climb because it's easier than groundwork. So it's weird. It's really, really, really hard at first. It's like the hardest thing you've ever done when you first start climbing, but you just do it and it's like, oh yeah, it'll fit. And you don't even think about stuff like that. But also I've hit and broken a lot of stuff. I made a lot of mistakes, you know? 
So I whip that with it. Whew. Nice. I've messed up a lot of stuff. So just be careful. But it's something to look forward to, you know, just know if you're struggling. The, the more you do it, and it helps like some people also they'll be like, oh I've been climbing for 10 years, and they climb like you know, once every two months over a 10 year period of time. That's not really that much experience, you know? And even if you're thinking about starting a tree service, it's nice. I, I kind of recommend just working as a production climber to just uh, get a feel for these trees before you get out here by yourself, you know? All right. <laughs> I guess, I guess so this is gonna be kind of tedious so it's a jungle down there that brush is probably 10 feet tall I don't want to ask the homeowner to get me a bigger saw so I'm actually gonna really put this thing to work here I'm gonna not push super hard I'm gonna take it kind of easy I don't want to burn my saw out this is like really big wood we're getting into but I don't want to go down and get a saw come back up and I don't want to have ask Dean to try to trudge through those bushes so I'm gonna try to do this with the saw we'll see if it works I only got a 14 inch guide bar The brush is like 10 feet tall, isn't it? <laughs> I think I'm gonna get a bigger saw. <laughs> well, it looks kind of like a mess. Do you think I should come down and cut some of that? Like, are you gonna be able to get <laughs> get to this tree with that saw? I can also cut my way in. I feel like that's a lot of brush. You got it? Yeah, and if you just unclip that carabiner and just clip it to the rear handle of that Makita, that'd be great. Yeah, this rope is perfect. Okay, thank you. Oh man, this rope looks perfect. So I need the bigger saw, honestly. It's actually a lot of fun <laughs> to carve those face cuts with the little bar, it's just fun, but that saw is one of a kind. I don't want to work it harder than it needs to. You know? It's not like I can just get John to make me another one. I hope he's okay. I literally have no idea what happened to John's custom saws. I think he's gone through some health problems or something. So, I hope he's okay. 
<laughs> All right, this Makita. Here we go. This thing is really powerful. It's a little not the easiest saw to start, and sometimes it doesn't idle that great. But I don't know why, but I, I really like this saw. why I like this saw when I start cutting this thing it does rip Man, my 462, I've ran this car for like five years and I've never done an ounce of maintenance to it except for clean it. Never lost a nut or a bolt or had anything break. Well, the, the, the air cover broke, but it doesn't even matter. And this little rope is perfect. Man, the spurs worked great. Oh, man. Yeah, make quick work of it though. Yeah, but then you gotta clean it up. Yeah, you got the hard part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cutting's okay. I wish you could cut it and it would just float away. Yeah. Perfect. Can't you work on that? I need to get a helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, down on the ground again. Um, I'm like the clumsiest person ever, so I'm gonna just take probably five, ten minutes, and I'm gonna try to give myself a little more room to stand because it's a big pile of crap. I don't want to be tripping and cutting my head off with that thing. So I'm just gonna take a few minutes, just swap it out a bit. <laughs> I almost didn't film this job. Look, that's the first time I've done that. <laughs> what an idiot is up there like, what a douchebag, I'm like bragging about how like how close that top was to the fence. And then I cut my pants, like, an, like a total idiot. Yeah, look at that, you know, I didn't feel a thing. I just felt my pants tug and I looked down and I cut my pants. So, well, that's how chainsaw tabs work. It's Dyneema on the inside. It's like, they used to make them out of Kevlar, now they make them out of Dyneema. So it's like a very soft rope, and it just binds up the chain, womp. And so the chain can't spin. And these pants might have just saved my life. There's a lot of bleeding that can happen in this part of the leg. So even though my thighs are rock solid, hardcore muscle, it still would have been a pretty bad cut. <laughs> so, so thank you, cloggers. You know, like, guilty of cheese and pants. Look at that. You know, that sucks that I cut these pants. These are really nice pants. They're clogger zeros, they're expensive, they're lightweight, but 
I'm glad that I did not cut my thigh with that chainsaw. So thank you cloggers. Man, I'm telling you, I, I always like go, nah, this job's not interesting. I'm not gonna film it. Cause it's a lot harder to do these jobs and film them, even though it probably doesn't seem like it. It's just one more thing to think about, the camera. So sometimes it's nice to just do the job and not have to think about trying to film it. But I swear something happens interesting every time. <laughs> Look how interesting that was. So thank you cloggers. These chaps really saved the day big time. You know, it probably didn't help is that I was like, frustrated with the saw I actually had worked on the I was trying to adjust the carburetor yesterday and I thought I had it dialed in and it just keeps dying so I was like okay I gotta keep throttling it so it doesn't die and I'm like thinking about that and that's probably why I cut my pants so you know what I'm gonna go grab a different saw and I'm gonna finish this tree but uh, yeah that's how chainsaw chops work Look at that, not staged. <laughs> I did not cut my chainsaw chap. I, it's funny, I, I posted a video, I accidentally cut my climbing line one time and uh, that 185 foot fur removal and I had people in the comments on Instagram, they thought that I had staged it <laughs> to like uh, plug Arbo Space, the company that made it, which is just ridiculous, but uh, I did not stage cutting my chaps either, so. I'm gonna get a different saw, you know, I just, I don't know what it is about this Makita. I just want it to work well. Uh, it has a lot of power. I just suck at tuning the carburetor probably. Maybe I'll have Gordy help me. All right, I'm gonna go grab my 66. I was like frustrated with this thing. It, what, the carburetor's not quite dialed in. I even messed with it yesterday trying to get it to run right. And I was like, ah, you know, just like I want to use the saw. Womp, womp, womp. I'm trying to keep the throttle going. And then I take a step and I'm not really paying attention. Usually, you know, if you're gonna walk, you should put the chain brake on, then take a step, chain brake off, cut. I'm trying to keep this thing going by wop whopping it. <laughs> I should have just gotten a, a proper saw. Yeah, that's what I should have done. So what I'm saying is it's what I'm saying is it's the chainsaw's fault. I did everything perfect because I'm the best. That's what I'm trying to say, you know. So <laughs> it's all the chainsaw's fault. <laughs> no, it's it's my fault for trying to just uh, throttle that thing to get it to work instead of just taking the time to go get a different saw or just you know, try tuning it again or something, but you shouldn't be walking around wop wopping it. Swamp this thing out some more, try not to cut myself. I said I was gonna cut my head off, but I said I almost cut my leg off. chips out you can kind of see through there I don't know if you can see on the camera I can kind of see daylight I got a little more wood on the far side it's a little more wood in there No more wood and we're done. Gotta be kidding me. Oh, I done did it now. You've got to be kidding me.
cotton was down. That's it for this video. So please like and subscribe. If you want to support this channel, I just ask if you ever need arborist gear, you check out my website, sapsupplies.com. If you need any tree work done, I promise to try my hardest not to cut myself on your property. <laughs> You can email me at guiltyoftreason1 at gmail.com. You can also check out my website, guiltyoftreason.com. If you want me to cut some trees for you. All right, guys. Thanks for watching that.